What's going on, everybody? Uh, so I recently passed 5,000 subscribers, so I want to do something a little bit off-brand, something a little interesting, a little uh, mix of my own passions and Toho project, because I think that's something that's really important to making Toho fan art. So today, we're going to be doing some of the drinks from the popular fan game, Mystia's Izakaya. Uh, there's been a lot of buzz around this game recently, and I've put a moderate amount of time into it. Uh, it's a really fun game where you get to make drinks and, well, you don't really make the drinks, I guess you just sell them. You get to make cuisines and things for yokai and really all the big players in Gensokyo. It's a really cute game, it's very fun, and I thought, instead of just talking about the game or the lore, what if I try mixing it with my own personal interest, which is making drinks? So I'm going to be making four drinks today, one for each of the alcohol levels in the game, which is none, low, mid, and high. So I think we're going to start with something that's no alcohol, and I think we're going to try Fairy Dew. Now, Fairy Dew is interesting because it's not something that really exists in real life, not as far as I'm aware. Uh, it's described in the game as being made from made by fairies who mix the morning dew with honey. You get this kind of sweet, cold drink that they drink in the morning, uh, and oftentimes it's stolen from them, so they never get to have the fruits of their labor, which is very tragic and sad. So we're going to try and make some that Fairy Dew to give back to those who have made it for us. So. I didn't really know what to think at first, based on the appearance of the drink. It's described as chillable, sweet, and no alcohol. From the appearance of the drink, it kind of looks like a lemonade, but if it did, I would expect it to have the fruity or sour qualities, which is what lemons have in the game. And it doesn't have either of those, so I'm thinking I want to try something that has honey, and I'm thinking morning dew, so something kind of leafy, kind of grassy flavored, um, and of course all cold on the rocks. So. First, I think we're going to start by making some honey syrup. Now, honey syrup is actually super easy to make. Um, in fact, I've got the ingredients for it right here. So what we're going to do is, and you might ask, why honey syrup and not just pour honey directly into the drink? Well, the truth is that honey syrup has a lot of benefits. For one, it's a little less sweet and a little less tart than normal honey is because it's a little bit diluted. And also because of its um, weaker viscosity, it's a lot easier to pour and mix in a drink. It's, imminently more mixable. It doesn't have to be shaken. You can just pour it directly into a drink and it's delicious. Now normally for a syrup, what you'd want to do is boil down the sugar and the medium until it's really, really dense. But you don't really have to do that with honey because the sugar is already dissolved in the honey. So what we're going to do is we're going to take about 400 grams of honey, which should be about the remainder of what I have in this bottle, put it all in a mixing bowl. There we go. Get all that out. <laughs> I'm using approximate measurements here. You can go more precise if you want, but I am not too stressed with technique. Uh, I'm more concerned about just the goodness of the ingredient. That should be good. And then we're going to take about 100 grams of filtered distilled water. Very important that you use filtered distilled water, not tap water, because that will give you a funk and possibly even mold your drink. I suppose I haven't actually opened this yet. About 100 grams, 80, well, I'd say about 80 for this much. Again, I'm not too concerned about exact measurements. I'll mix it up, see if it's good as I go. Uh, but yeah, we're just going to whisk that together. It's going to be really hard to incorporate at first. That water and honey is just really going to stick together. And you're going to want to go slow so you don't splash it all over the place. But as it starts to incorporate, you're going to be able to pick up speed. And it's just going to mix right in. Make sure you're scraping the sides and the bottom to get all, all that honey incorporated. We don't want to leave any behind on that bowl. And then what you have is just an eminently pourable form of honey. And you can put this in a jar to keep it for later. Um, if you don't sterilize it, make sure that you refrigerate it. Um, I'm not going to sterilize this just now because I am going to use part of it right away and probably just put the rest in the fridge to use very soon. Oh, I should have grabbed a funnel. Pour that right in this jar. And there we have honey syrup. And that's going to be the base ingredient, one of the base ingredients, for our fairy dew. Hmm. Love honey so much. So fucking good. All right, so now what we're going to actually do is go ahead and build this drink up. We're going to do a dry stir. So what we're going to do, we're going to take our jigger, do four ounces honey syrup. Then we're going to take six ounces of our base water, which I'm going to actually, you can use distilled water, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually use cucumber water, which is just that. It's distilled water 
with chopped up cucumbers. And what this is gonna add, it's gonna add that leafy, fresh flavor that I was talking about in the beginning, being that this is dew collected right off of morning leaves and grass, and I think it would have that real fresh, grassy flavor. You're really just gonna chop up cucumbers, put them in the drink. Um, I would recommend letting it infuse for a day or two, but not much longer than that because, I mean, cucumbers are, you know, vegetable material, so they are gonna rot eventually, especially in the water. So, I'm gonna just take all that, get rid of that for now, and then, final ingredient, ginger syrup. Now, I'm actually using a homemade ginger syrup, um, so if you don't have that, I do recommend going a little bit if you're using store-bought, I recommend going a little higher on the amount than I'm about to do, but I'm going to do just a half an ounce. Because the way I make ginger syrup, it's a very strong flavor. Very heavy in sugar and ginger. So if you're using store-bought, maybe go for like three quarters of an ounce. Uh, but ginger really doesn't take a lot to become really overpowering in a drink. So we're just going to dry stir this. No ice is needed just yet. Just stir all that up good. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna take our drinkware, which in my case, using a chilled mason jar. I'm gonna put a couple ice cubes in there. Uh, I'm using, oopsie. I'm gonna put a couple of these small ice cubes in here. If you have only large ice cubes, you can always just crack them, but I personally like the visuals of the smaller ice cubes. We'll give them maybe like six or seven. Um, that should be good. I personally like the visuals of the smaller ice cubes in this particular drink. I think it matches the original Mora and just has a very homemade kind of feel to it. And we're just gonna pour it right in. You could shake this if you really want to pulverize everything, but like, in my opinion, I think it's going to kind of make it more cloudy and get rid of kind of that nice and golden look to it. Uh, and for garnish, we're actually going to take a pick and we're going to take a fresh daisy blossom, pierce it right through the bud. All right, so we're going to have a pick just like that. And of course, blue straw. Gonna lay it across the top like that. So that as we drink, we can kind of smell that bud. Let's see, oh, I'm being all fickle with it. So that as we drink, we smell that fresh daisy. Oh, that is so good. The cucumber water is really invisible in there, but it just adds this nice back fresh refreshingness to it. But the up front is just the honey. Oh, it's so much honey and it's so good. Mm. If you don't want it to be quite that sweet, maybe go a little bit lighter on the honey, but man, that, in my opinion, is perfect fairy dew. It's sweet, it's cold, and it's just everything a fairy would love, so. Mm. That is so fucking good. All right, so that is our first drink, is the fairy dew. All right, so the next thing we're gonna try is uh, Zoon beer, which is a low alcohol drink and described as being bitter and a beer drink. Now, when it comes to Zoon beer, um, Zoon's pretty well known for his habits of drinking beer, and I don't really know what his favorite is. There's a really old interview where he says that Karen is his favorite brand, but I don't know what his favorite beer in that brand is, and that was a really long time ago, so... I'm just gonna go with what he said back then, which was Kieran is his favorite brand. So my guess is that we're gonna go with Kieran Ichiban. So... So, we've got this right here, Kieran Ichiban, premium lager. If you want a Zoon beer, this is it. Kill it, pour it in a lager. Um, just do whatever you want with it, really. Maybe put a lime on top. Uh, but I think we can go a little better because something that really stuck out to me from that interview with Zoon is that he said, the food in America is too big and the beer is too small. So this is an American style lager, even though it's a Japanese brand. So I think we gotta go a little bigger. And I've got a couple of interesting ideas as to how we can do that. Um, first, we're gonna start putting all this into our shaker. Um, I think we're gonna shake this over just one cracked ice cube because we're gonna be putting so much in here that if we do any more than one ice cube, 
it is just not gonna fit. Oopsie. Cracking ice is never easy. Okay, so then once we've got a cracked ice cube in there, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna take some scotch. And we are going to do five ounces. There's still a little bit of honey in there, watch, watch that out. And we are gonna do five ounces of blended scotch. Yes, that's a lot. It is a fuck ton, and you are gonna see why. So here we go. Because what we're gonna do is we're essentially going to make a scotch highball, but instead of using soda water, we're gonna replace that fizzy element with beer. So, of course, we're gonna need something to lighten up the drink, because if it's just scotch and beer, that's gonna be really fucking bitter, really strong, really unpleasant to drink. But what we're gonna do, we're gonna do a couple ounces of limes. Go ahead and cut these up. I'm gonna hold on to one of these expended limes. I'm gonna use it later. All right, and we're gonna do three ounces of that lime juice. I'm gonna need a little more than that. That wasn't quite as much as I was hoping for. Let's do one more lime. That should be good. Let's see, that should get us the last little bit we need. Yeah, that's pretty much actually perfect. Three ounces of lime. And then we're going to do three ounces as well, ginger syrup. Keep in mind, ginger syrup is very strong. So this is going to have a very strong presence of ginger. But that's gonna be okay because of how much we're gonna balance it out with other ingredients. gonna fill my damn shaker. This is the kind of drink where I would actually not say to go higher if you have a store-bought ginger syrup because three ounces is gonna show up no matter what kind of brand you're using. Like you really don't have to worry about that. It's going to show up. It's going to be very, very present. My shaker's already almost full. God damn. Next, we're gonna do three ounces of peach knots. And that is going to be pretty much all that this shaker can hold. You might want to go with a little more... Might want to go with a little more ice in the shaker. But, again, it's going to pretty much fill up, so... And we now can shake that up. And with this kind of shaker, you don't really need to press really hard on it because it'll shake it up. It'll cool down and actually make a vacuum seal because of the ice. So don't worry about having ones out of caps or seals or any of that garbage. Just use an normal shaker. Two tins, that's all you need. And we are going to strain this, double strain even. Where's my fucking strainer? Oh, there you are, little rascal. What were you doing in there? Supposed to be in my bar. And we're going to take this, put it into a chilled 32 ounce stein. This is going to be our Zoon beer, of course. So, we're gonna double strain this, of course, because there is fruit juice in there. There we go. And then, the piece de resistance. One entire bottle of Kirin Ichiban. Should take you right up to the top. A little short, maybe, but I think that's gonna be all right. And this is going to be our Zoom beer. A little frothy at the top. Maybe we'll give that just a light mix.
I don't want to lose all that fizziness, but we'll give it a light mix. And down the hatch. Wow. Okay. Yeah, that's really good. The first thing that hits you is definitely the beer. And then it's just mm, peach, peachy with a little bit of lime in there. You don't really get much of the scotch, I don't feel. The scotch is definitely present, but it's mostly this peachy kind of beer. Not probably as bitter as maybe I could have gone for, but I think it's going to be all right. But yeah, I think that's going to be our Zoom beer. I think we hit pretty much on the mark. Now I will say, this is low alcohol, like the recipe goes, in that it's about 8 or 9% alcohol. This is still like 30 ounces of alcohol, so really I would not take this lightly. Like, make sure you drink this with friends, maybe put a couple straws in, but like... Mm, that is so good. Yeah, the more you get into it, the more you taste the beer and that bitterness starts to come out, and that's really good. The top foam is definitely a lot sweeter, but underneath that is the beer and the scotch, and it's just... Mm, that's so good. Yeah, that is gonna be drink number two, the Zoom beer. Again, like I said, drink responsibly because this drink is really high proof. All right, and as I'm cleaning up the bar to prepare for our next drinks, I think I'm gonna go through a couple of receipts from customers. So, so Devilus8281 asks, what advice do you have for people wanting to get into the Toho games or get better at them or get into the Toho community? Well, Devilus, I'd say pretty much the same thing that I would say to everyone, which is I'm not very good at the Toho game, so I couldn't give you advice for getting better other than practice. There's a lot of good advice on the Toho wiki. Re watch people who do streams and lead runs. Um, really focus on your character hitbox a lot. Get used to using bombs pretty frequently. That's the advice that's given in the game. Use bombs economically. Uh, so I would say that. Um, as far as get into the games, if you haven't played any of them, I'd say start with the Twilight Studios games, the Task Pro games. Uh, most of them are on Steam. Uh, most of them are pretty cheap, and games like 15.5 have full English translation, so they're easy to get into, and let's be honest, the Tassifro art is a little easier to get used to if you're not used to the Toho community. Zoom art is a, very much an acquired taste. It's a, it's a taste we all love, but it is definitely an acquired taste. So that would be my answer to you. Alright. Customer Danny HSR says, when it comes to differences between PC98 era and Windows era, are there any aspects that you think were better in the PC98 era? Um, but, oop, pretty much not. Like, <laughs> I know this is going to ruffle some feathers, but there's basically nothing that I like about the PC98 era. Like, sure, some people say this, the art was a little better back then, but the truth is that wasn't because Zoom was more talented, that's just because he traced more often, was a lot more, <laughs> a lot more blatant about content that he stole. Which isn't a bad thing. He was a learning artist at the time. I can't really fault him that much for it. Um, I think there were some interesting concepts in it, but overall I think the games play really janky. I don't enjoy them. Uh, the chiptune music as well hurts my ears. That's a personal thing because I have tinnitus, so I can't really enjoy chiptune music. So that's just a me thing. But um, yeah, I'm not really a big fan of PC-98. I wouldn't say that there's anything that's better about them, but I guess there's a charm to it that people like. And I do appreciate that side of the community, so. I guess that's your answer, is I'm a very much a Windows supremacist. All right. Customer Chim Blaze asks, which is your favorite classic IOSIS promotional video? Honestly, none of them. <laughs> like, I, I, <laughs> I kind of find a lot of the older IOSIS videos to be kind of obnoxious. Uh, I will say a lot of them are earworms, and I do find myself humming a lot of them. And I do have a really soft spot for Nekomiko Reimu. The little gif of Reimu just with the little gohei, it's just, it's adorable. It warms my heart. Um, but like, stuff like Overdrive and stuff, I, it, it shocks me to find like that there's like teenagers on the internet who are posting Easy Moto gifts in response to people like not liking the games. And it's like, <laughs> I know that some of the people posting Easy Moto memes are younger than the Easy Moto video. So it's like, I don't know. I. Maybe if it wasn't for obnoxious people reposting it so often, I probably would like it a little more. Um, but I think the music is, it's a little on the excessive side, but there is a lot of older IOS stuff that I really like. And like I said, Neko Miko Reimu will always be with me. Um, Marissa Stole the Precious Thing, while not really a song that I particularly like, I do find myself going back to a lot. So I guess there's your answer on that. 
Customer Yuyuko says, who would be the worst Toho character to encounter in real life? Um, oop. Uh, easily, it's gotta be, uh, Seija. Like, Seija is the only character I can say who is holistically evil and bad. Not because of any part of her character, like, she doesn't have some grand character flaw to overcome. She's a demon of being bad. Like, <laughs> there's nothing redeemable about her. She even tries to do things that are excessively bad just to, like, prove that she's being good at being an Amada Jaku. So, I feel like she'd be the only character who would fuck up your life with no recourse and have fun doing it. So, I'd probably, probably Seiji would be my answer on that. Anyway, let's get back to some drinks. So, we've got another drink that we're gonna make, which is a Wind Priestess. The Wind Priestess is described in the game as being brought over from the outside world by in a mysterious Miko that was, it was just Sané. It was clearly, obviously, Sané from the color of the drink, the name of the drink, the flavor of the drink, like, Sané brought it over to the world. And looking at it, it's described as chillable and sweet. And it's pretty clearly a green grasshopper, which is just a grasshopper made using green creme de menthe instead of white. I don't have green creme de menthe, I have white creme de menthe. So I think we're gonna try something a little off-brand for a Grasshopper, but I think it might work out pretty good. So let's go ahead and grab a blender first. Because this is going to be a blended drink. Take our blender, and I think we're gonna start with some white rum. Let's do an ounce and a half of white rum. Oopsie, wrong side. About nearly poured two and a half ounces. Hey, that was more like two, but, you know, I think it's going to be okay. Maybe we'll just balance out the other ingredients a little more. Then we're going to take our white creme de menthe. If you have green creme de menthe, I wouldn't recommend using it in this particular recipe, because I think it's going to end up being really green. But we're going to do like a half an ounce. Like, it really doesn't take much of creme de menthe. It's so minty. And I like things that are extremely minty. So I would do more creme de menthe, or you just put sh straight mint right into it. But I know that most of my viewers don't have the palate to eat toothpaste, so I think I'm going to be responsible and not put too much mint in here. And then, our last main ingredient, mint chocolate chip. I don't have an ice cream scoop, I have a big spoon. Peasants will really see you using a spoon for ice cream and say, he hath not the resources to purchase an ice cream scoop. We're gonna do like three goodly scoops. I'd say that was like a scoop and a half. So do like that much more. Mm. Love mint chocolate chip ice cream so much. Now we are gonna blend this, but we're gonna blend this slowly and in steps. And you see the reason why for this. Because there are chocolate chips in here that we don't want to be too finely chopped up. Where'd I put my damn lid? We don't want them to be too finely chopped up because if we do, and we're just gonna pulse this. Ooh. Then I think that's gonna be about good. It looks good to me. The reason why is because if we do it too finely, those chocolate chips are gonna get into the drink and just kind of, not necessarily give it a bad taste, but give it an unpleasant look. So we're actually gonna do, gonna strain this into our drink. I could have maybe gone a little more on the blending. All right, and then we're gonna top that off with a lively brig of mint on the side, and I think that will be our Wind Priestess. Let's give that a try. Mmm. It's very good. The first thing you get is definitely the mint, and then that just fades into rum. The rum is very present, very lovely. The mint definitely doesn't stay as long once you've taken it away from your nose, because a lot of that mint comes from the fresh mix, mint sprig. It's definitely very much in the nose, not as much in the mouth, which I quite like. I think actually we can improve this a little bit. I'm gonna say this is an optional, 
step, but I think this is gonna help us get more of that grasshopper feel. And that is, we're gonna take a pinch of cocoa and just dash it over the top. So it's not really in the drink, it's just in the nose. Let's see if that does any better for us. Wow, okay, yeah, definitely recommend. It doesn't make the drink look quite as beautiful, it makes it look a little dirty. But getting that cocoa in your nose is just, oh, mint chocolatey, chip, dreamy, just wonderful. I'm not really a big fan of creme de cacao myself, so I wouldn't put it in the drink myself, but a little bit of cocoa over the top. Just make sure you don't go too heavy or you will inhale it and you will die. Um, but that is our wind priestess. All right, and let's do a couple more receipts before we go into the last drink. All right, so customer Danny7120 says, if you can make a Toho character from PC98 return to modern Toho, or hell, just a character who wasn't featured often, who would it be? I don't know, maybe Genji? Like, I think it's interesting to have, like, Raymu to have, like, this pet character who's also kind of a mentor, kind of a guider character, who's just this old turtle sitting in the back of the pond. And Zoom did actually confirm that he is still chilling in the back of the pond. He is still canon in the Windows Zero, so... I would really like to see him. We don't really need him anymore because originally he was Raymu's method of flight, but now she just flies, so uh, she doesn't really need that. But I would like to see Genbu return as a supporting character in something and see Raymu just fly around on his back uh, every once in a while. I, I, it would just be fun, I think. All right, then. Customer Town Founder asks, which Toho character would you like to have as a close friend? Um, probably... Either Moku or Kena. And this is my reasoning for both. Moku because I think we'd be incredibly similar. I think we'd have a lot to talk about. I very much self-identify with Moku. I think we would have incredible amounts of things to talk about in terms of just mental space, things like hobbies like cooking, helping people through the bamboo forest, kind of that hermitude lifestyle. I think we would share a lot of interest on, so. And then maybe Kena because I think Kena is just a good friend. She's a good friend to Moku. She's a good friend to basically everyone she comes in contact with. She really fiercely defends her friends. She's got a lot of interesting knowledge, but can still give, you know, really... She's not necessarily a nerd. She's very wise and has this kind of expanded view on history because of consuming history and being a longtime teacher and protector of humans. I just think she would be a great drink buddy, honestly. So that's my answer. Moku or Kena? Maybe both. Maybe both. I think a, a drink night with all three would be... All three, that includes me. With all three of us would be very nice. All right, one more receipt and we'll get back to drinking. So, customer La Sante Poutine asks, I hope that's Spanish because I don't know how to pronounce that. Maybe it's Canadian. Most and least favorite Toho games. Least favorite is, um, and I guess this is maybe not fair because I haven't played every Toho game, but of the ones I've played, least favorite is Toho 6 and Body of Scarlet Devil. I think it's really weak. I think it got caught in a weird transitional period between PC-98 and Windows, where it feels more like a PC-98 game, but it kind of has the jankiness of the Windows era. It doesn't play very well. Hitboxes are really weird. I never really attached much to the characters or music of that era. I know it's really dear to a lot of people, but just not for me. I don't know. I never got it. Uh, as for favorite, I don't know if I could pick a favorite, but the one I definitely play the most is 14. I don't know why. There's something about 14 I can just keep going back to. I think it's the music. Uh, I wouldn't say it's my favorite soundtrack overall, I'd say probably Mountain of Faith is, but something about the feel of Toho 14 is good. It just feels like Mountain of Faith, but a little more snappy. I don't know, I can't even describe it, but that's the one I keep finding myself going back to, is Toho 14. So, I know it's not a very popular one, but I like it, and I like a lot of the characters. So, alright, let is, I think it is time to make our final drink. So, we're going to make a drink that is high in alcohol. So... I had, I was going between a couple different options, and I eventually settled on either a Fire Rat's Robe or an Oni Killer, which are very similar drinks in the way that they're presented and sold in-game. Very similar price points. They're both sochu and, um, they're both shochu and they're high alcohol. The main difference is that one is chillable and one is heatable. So I need a drink that is part hot and part cold, and I think I have a way I can do that. That kind of sounds tiki-esque to me, so I think we're going to try a tiki drink for this. We're going to start with an ice cube. Crack that in here. Uh, 
I just watched one of my bottles jump off the... One of my soda bottles just committed suicide. That's tragic. I'm glad I'm wearing shoes. Well, let me fix... Well, I guess I'll have to sweep that up later. That was a limited time bottle. Damn! Damn! Anyway, back to the drink. So I don't know exactly what I'm doing here because I have never used shochu in a bar. Never. So I'm really freestyling here. I think we're gonna go for something in the ballpark of a zombie, but I don't really know. Shochu, at least this bottle, which is Ichiko Saiten, is, it's interesting because it's not something you see in a lot of Western bartending or really anything. Like, for instance, Cocktail Codex, you know, has several hundred cocktails and not a single one of them contains shochu. It doesn't even have a page on shochu. Um, in my experience, it's kind of a neutral liqueur, almost kind of like a vodka, but it has this aroma of sake. So I think we're gonna work with it kind of like a sake. I don't know, maybe it's more like a rum. I don't know. I'm gonna use it like it was a rum. So we're gonna do something like kind of tiki yet. All right, so we're gonna do some overproof rum. Just do one ounce of this, I suppose. Overproof rum is really strong. Don't go too heavy on it. It's called fire water for a reason. Then I think we're gonna go just a half an ounce of Luxardo Maraschino. Again, I am really freestyling. I haven't even tested this drink. I have no idea if this is gonna be any good, but we're gonna see. I actually went a little bit lower than a half an ounce or a quarter of an ounce. And honestly, that's probably enough because it only takes a little bit of Luxardo Maraschino for the whole thing to taste like fucking Luxardo Maraschino. Anyway, we're gonna do about one lime, I think. This should be like an ounce. Normally out of these limes, I'm used to getting about an ounce per lime. That's about an ounce. I'll have metric on the screen for everybody. Because I know that not everybody lives in the America, which designs all of your bartending. That's... European bartending brings a lot to the world, but America does it better. All right, so I think then what we're gonna do with that is about three quarters of an ounce Grenadine. And a half an ounce of Simple. I would have used Demerara here, actually. We'll do a full ounce. I would have used Demerara here, but literally as I went to record, I got out my Demerara gum syrup and it had molded. I had a homemade Demerara syrup and it molded. Fucking Missouri weather, I'm telling you, man. Can't be helped when it's like 100 degrees out here and like 70% humidity. Can't be helped, Missouri summer weather. All right, and I think we're gonna go ahead and shake this up. I think we're gonna take some glass here. Glassware in the game is this really neat kind of like tiki mug stuff, so I think we're definitely gonna go for this badass fucking mug that I have here. We're gonna take our last two ice cubes. I'm gonna crack them right into the drink. In fact, actually, I'm gonna top it off with a couple of small ice cubes just so that it reaches all the way to the top. And then, we're just gonna open pour it right into the drink. Maybe we'll do a half gate pour. We'll do a half gate pour. I do want some of that ice in there, but not the really big chunks. Mm. 
Then, I think we're gonna get a straw for this. There we go. And this is where the magic happens. Remember that lime that I mentioned before? This is how we're gonna make it a heatable drink. What we're gonna do, take a crouton and that half lime wheel and I'm gonna take lemon extract. And we, oh, I haven't actually opened this bottle yet. Now the thing about lemon extract is that it is 80% alcohol, which means it is extremely flammable. We're actually gonna pour that over the crouton. You can soak it beforehand. I don't find it necessary. Make sure we use an angled straw here because we want this away from our face. And what we're gonna do, I'm gonna take a match. Light that up. I'm gonna give us a, a kind of short, kind of bluish kind of flame. And once it catches the crouton, then it's gonna give this kind of like pleasant burning smell and get a little taller. But I think that's how we're gonna do that, is we're gonna have this kind of short little flame on top that's kind of just a visual and a thing we're smelling as we're drinking, but most of the drink is gonna be cold because we chilled the, the glass and it's also mostly ice. Let's give this to that. Actually, there is one more way we can garnish this, which is cinnamon. And we're gonna take a little cinnamon and just pop that over the top. And voila, tiki. A cinnamon pour is, you don't wanna to go too heavy on the cinnamon, of course, because it is gonna flavor the drink, but if it's mostly in the top, it's mostly in the smell, it's gonna give this smoky burn cinnamon flavor and just give this little whoosh, which is gonna be really nice for your customers. So, let's try that. Oh, it is super proofy. You really taste that, that shochu flavor in there. It's very kind of sake flavoring. The grenadine does a lot for it as well. Let's go ahead and blow this out. And that's gonna give it kind of a smoky rise to it that you're gonna inhale while you drink, which is also nice. Mmm. Ah, oh, wow. Yeah, that's really high proof. I can see why in the game it's definitely rest, uh, listed as a high alcohol content drink. The zombie, which is this is, this is really a riff on the zombie, is already a pretty high proof drink. So this is a little less proofy <laughs> than a zombie would be, but that shochu really gets you. I would say probably even go a little bit harder on the hurricane rum um, or any high proof rum because uh, the overproof rum that I used was about 137 proof. Maybe use like a 151. Mm. Yep, there's that Luxardo Maraschino. It's, it's there, it's not too present, and I only want with a quarter of an ounce, so definitely use a quarter of an ounce. <laughs> the Alexander Maraschino is just super, super present. So, I would probably do a little more of that overproof rum because it doesn't really show up very much, so, yeah. Mm. Oh, that is so good. I could not count on Oni, that's for sure. All right, so we're gonna do a last few couple of receipts, and then I think we're gonna wrap it up. So, Timothy4249 says, the red pill gives you the ability to summon any Toho character. The blue kill yeets you to against Tokyo. Um, honestly, I would not want to put our world through the suffering of bringing Toho characters here. I wouldn't want to put Toho characters through the suffering of being here in our boring ass world, so. Yeah, given the chance, I would ditch it all and go to against Tokyo, I think. <laughs> oh, he's blue pilled. He's a liberal. <laughs> All right, customer Pun Pun Munchies says, least favorite Toho character, Tenchi. I hate Tenchi, I hate everything about Tenchi. She's annoying, I want to smash her. Not like that, not like that. I want to kill her and she dies. And can you tell I've had a lot <laughs> of mm. That's so just fucking good. Oh my God. <laughs> I had a little bit to drink. Um, yeah, Tenshi. I hate Tenshi. She's super annoying. Um, and really, I'm gonna, I say that really strong. I don't hate any Toho characters. I think they're all really great in their own right, but Tenshi's definitely the one that annoys me the most. So, I'm gonna go with Tenshi. Customer Tenshi says, Ten- Sorry. 
Customer Tenchi asks, first game you ever played? I kind of already mentioned that it was Embodiment of Scarlet Devil. Didn't really care for it. Customer Shin Shogo asks, feelings on Osana Reimu? Osana Reimu is a really interesting fan work. Um, as it, I feel like it was, it changed a lot about the community. It kind of became the central understanding of how fan works could be a bit more deep and emotional. Um, it's a really big production. Um, it, I think in total, putting all the comics together is about like an hour long. It's like film length. So I have a lot of respect for it. I don't really like it that much. Um, I think the story's good. It's not anything that really shocked me or overwhelmed me. Uh, it's kind of sad, yeah, but I think people kind of exaggerate the sadness a little bit. I've definitely read better, but it's good. As far as fan work terms, it is really good, and I would recommend anyone who's getting in the show community and getting into fan works, definitely check out Osana Reimu. It's kind of a landmark for the community, so check it out. And then from there, I would recommend branching into other fan works. There's a lot of other really good ones. Uh, customer Wilson Owen says, Origin of your name? Just like Big Frogs? Um, I do like Big Frogs. I quite like Bullfrogs. They're very delicious. Um, but in addition to that, originally my YouTube channel, and some might remember this, if they watched my video back when I made the Toho Iceberg, and that was like the only video on my channel, um, the username was originally Mega Frogadier, and it originally came from um, me wanting to set my name as Mega Greninja, but I found there was another channel at the time, which I don't even think exists anymore, but there was another channel at the time that was named Mega Greninja, and I was like, well, I like Greninja, but let's try something else, so Mega Frogadier, even though Frogadier doesn't have a Mega Evolution, and I get that question like at least once a month, how do you Mega Evolve Frogadier? My answer is always, performance enhancing drugs. Uh, but yeah, that's, it was originally Mega Frogadier, and I shortened it down to Mega Frog, which makes it funny because people think that I ripped my name off of Mega Pig, because we, he also makes Toho content. But my channel is actually older than his. So his comes from like a Mega Man. So we have these two like very different channels that with very different origins that kind of converged because neither of us were making Toho content when we made our YouTube channels. He was just doing indie game stuff and I was doing like D&D &D and just video essay stuff. And then we just kind of converged into very similar channels. So yeah, we're not the same people. We didn't riff on each other. Uh, it just happened that way, so. Um, so, customer Tom Kuya asked, what got you into Toho? Um, eh. uh, music, actually. It was uh, Toho Sheet Music on ninsheetmusic.org. I'll put the URL over here if I got that wrong, but I think it's ninsheetmusic.org. Um, I was browsing video game music because I wanted to play songs from Legend of Zelda, which I was a really big fan of when I was a young kid. And... Uh, I came across sheet music for Toho, and I was like, "Why are what's this Toho? Why are all the names of the games so long? So I looked at the music on YouTube to figure out how to play it, and I found I really liked the music. So for like a solid couple years, I only knew Toho for the music. And then I was like, Toho's a game series, I should check out the games. And that's when I tried Embodiment of Scarlet Devil, and I hated it. <laughs> and I almost fell out of Toho because of that, but I stuck with it, interestingly enough, because of uh, the comics because it was around that time that Wild and the Horned Hermit was coming out, so that got me back into the series. And I didn't get back to Toho games until 15.5, I think, because that came out... That was the first official Toho game on Steam. That was a big deal, so I was like, I'll give it another chance. So I got back into Toho, and uh, yeah, it's pretty much all history from there. So. All right, and our final customer is Duawako, who asks, info dump on us about your favorite piece of art. Um, I'm not entirely sure whether you mean specifically Toho art or art in general. So I think I'm going to answer both questions. Um, as far as Toho fan art goes, it would be really hard to pick a favorite, especially because, you know, I run a podcast for interviewing Toho artists, so I wouldn't want to pick any favorites. But I will say one piece of Toho fan art that I really like, and I will link it over here because I don't remember what it was called, is a piece, a painting by Nawful Dreamer, which incorporates Hecatia with elements of um, Islamic mythology. And that's something I find really interesting. Like, I've always mentioned that my favorite thing about Toho fan works is taking something you're passionate about and mixing it with Toho. So seeing this, his, like, this sort of cultural interpretation of Hecatia is amazing because already Hecatia is super multicultural. She's a Greek goddess who runs a hell that is full of Japanese demons and administrated by a Hindu deity. 
Like, there's all these different religions and stuff mixing together with uh, New Hell. So mixing that with um, Islamic mythology is really cool, and it's a really cool take, and it really shows the individuality and the personality of the painter that really comes through. It's a beautiful painting. It's got a really nice muted color palette, which I like as someone who's colorblind. So muted color palettes really stick out to me. Um, not because I can see them more easily, but because when you use contrast instead of different colors, us using a smaller color palette with stronger contrast is actually easier for me to see as someone who's colorblind. So yeah, it really stands out to me. I love Nawful Dreamer's kind of weird, creepy style, the way he draws mouths. Makes the Toho characters look very monstrous, and it really fits this this whole style of this hellish Islamic deity. And it's great. I love it. It's There's so many elements of Toho fan art that I love it. As far as art projects overall, really hard to make pick a favorite because there's so many different kinds of art. Um, but if I was to pick just a favorite piece of art in general, I would probably just pick the any of the artworks by Klaus Oldenbury. I mentioned him in my Memories of Phantasm video as creating the giant shuttlecocks, but he also did a lot of other things where he just took small things and made them really big, like the giant baseball statue in Chicago to represent Chicago's long history with baseball. Um, Klaus Oldenbury's works are just indescribably amazing. They're so impressive just to look at and be around. Like Photographs just don't really do it a justice. You have to see Klaus Oldenbury's but, like, works to really believe it. But yeah, anything about Klaus Oldenbury, I just love. So, anyway, uh, that is our drinks of Misty as Izakaya. Uh, I am planning to make uh, a sequel to this video, which is Foods of Misty as Izakaya, but it will take a while because I'm trying to procure some very difficult to get ingredients, including lamprey. I will be making grilled lamprey, I promise. I will not release the video until I have grilled lamprey. So, um,. I'm going to keep drinking these because these are fucking delicious. <coughs> anyway, so a uh, quick life update. Uh, there, one of the reasons this video was delayed in addition to some of the bottles that I needed for this getting delayed in the mail, I got in a really bad car accident. My car was totaled. I was put in the ER. I was hospitalized. I recovered after a couple of days with some minor injuries, but more critically than that, um, the guy who wrecked my car didn't have insurance. So it's going to be really hard for me to recoup the cost of the hospital bills and the cost to get a new car, which I will need for work. So I do want to mention that I do have a Kofi page where you can donate if you want to, free will donations, or I do have commissions for voice acting. From, you know, 5 to $20, you can get me to voice act various different things. If you have animation or art projects that you want my voice in, I have a voice reel where you can see the various different voices I do, and I can do many more in addition to that. So if you want to commission me, I do have a Kofi page, and I would really appreciate some help in this time to hopefully recuperate some of the costs of my car that I lost. It was completely total. So anyway, thank you for watching. Um, I want to say thank you for 5,000 subscribers. It's just <sighs> out of my mind that we could even get to this point. So um, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you soon in the next part where we do Foods of Misty's Izakaya, and in that time, I'm going to drink all this fucking beer. Cheers, and thank you for watching. <laughs>